Blog Talk Radio. Verse 15, the horse leech hath two daughters, 
crying, crying. Give, give, give. There, there are three, three things, things that are never satisfied. Yea, uh, four, uh, four things. things. Say not, it is, it is enough. enough. Now, in verse 14, it mentions the horse leech. Now, if you look up the word horse leech in your concordance, it uh, it means to suck. And so, and then with this description that it gives you with the teeth, it's very similar to uh, a chupacabra, uh, meaning uh, to do the same things, you know, like to suck, to suck blood. Um, some people even think that this refers to a vampire. But uh, a leech is kind of a, a lizard-like creature, and a horse, meaning of a good size. So you have possibly like some sort of reptilian creature or chupacabra. And chupacabra, me, is more of a um, a reptilian-type creature, more so than, than like a furry creature, you know. Because uh, if you do your study on it, you get more of a reptilian kind of creature. And I don't believe that the, the chupacabra is of planet Earth. I believe it's from another planet, whether aliens have uh, brought it to Earth to, to, you know, to do things here on Earth, to, to check out things, you know, take back reports or whatever. Or they, uh, when they were visiting Earth, they could have uh, just accidentally let this creature loose. You know, who knows why, but I do not believe that the chupacabra is a part of planet Earth. I don't believe that. I believe it is... Uh, of another world. Well, for the first one, I'm going to say that they could have released it as a guinea pig to see how a species might survive in, an, in the terrestrial environment, or as you say, it might have been perhaps something like a pet that escaped. But uh, first of all, as you know, and everyone I think, oh, this is my thesis, my contention, that the universe is literally teeming with life. That life is indeed the common denominator of the cosmic backdrop. So that I, I argue that every single planet in the universe harbors a spectrum of bioforms ranging from lower to higher environments, and no planet can be ruled out as a life bearer, no matter how hostile it may appear to us, because as we found on Earth, we have many counterexamples that no matter how inimical an environment is, some form of life seems to be able to thrive in it. And uh, we've, as I said, we've recently discovered uh, one underwater entity that lives its entire life without ever using oxygen, a totally anaerobic creature. So it is conceivable that the so-called chupacabra could have evolved on one planet after another outside of Earth. And again, the fact that it's either the primary entity on its planet that may even have intelligence, or if it's a secondary element brought by more intelligent creatures, I think that's certainly within the realm of feasibility. Don't you agree? I do agree. Um, oh, yeah. And this, an interesting thing about the chupacabra is this opens up doors for um, many possibilities. I mean, even a, a small understanding of the reptilian creatures, you know. Um, uh, on the Internet, when you look at the pictures and different things, you don't get a whole lot of information on the chupacabra. But I do believe that this is an intelligent creature, possibly even more intelligent than humans. Well, evidently it is because nobody has ever really seen any. I think the only footage that I've seen that kind of makes me scratch my head is that piece uh, on CNN where the uh, taxidermist got the um, had had the I don't know what it was, but he was calling it a chupacabra. I don't believe it's chupacabra, but that's probably about as good as it's going to get for us to see. You know. Well, we have to consider all possibilities. And, of course, I'm inclined to, to agree with you on the alien, but uh, we have to acknowledge that there have been other possibilities. And some of the so-called chupacabras that hunters claim they've found under analysis turned out to be either a dog or a coyote suffering from a severe case of mange, giving it this unusual appearance, and it was nothing extraordinary. And that's still a possibility, I have to say. Then there's also the uh, hypothesis that's been raised that this could be some sort of um, creature that was created in one of our bio labs. In fact, we have one down in Puerto Rico. Uh, genetic experimentation taking place, and either the chupacabra escaped or they just tossed a dead one out or let it go. And it could be the result of just human genetic engineering without any alien involvement. Uh, I, I think we have to consider that possibility. Then, as I pointed out before, we, we have so many mysterious entities around the globe, such as possible lake monsters and Bigfoot creatures. This could be another entity that is native to our planet, 
that we simply, what we call a cryptid, that simply has not been captured and properly identified and may have no alien contact. So I think all possibilities are, are on the table. I'm not as confident as, as you are, Benny, that this is strictly an alien creature. I'd like to think so, but we, we have to acknowledge these other possibilities. Exactly. That is that true. Is true. We, can't we can't ignore, ignore the other, the other possibilities. possibilities. Um, I guess kind of like the, uh, the vampire of Toothus, which is uh, the vampire squid. There's not a whole lot of information on that. Uh, there is real footage of the vampire squid, uh, but uh, as far as detailed information, uh, they don't really have any uh, other than it has bioluminescence on its tentacles. It's not really aggressive, uh, and it can, you know, manipulate its prey. Uh, but, yeah, that, that is true. we got to understand all the possibilities, you know. Like I say, I like to believe the Chupacabra is uh, purely of another world, but it is true that this may be uh, its home planet, you know. Because Bigfoot exists, and, and we've not really seen any YouTube footage yet other than the Roger Patterson footage. Well, uh, I've Which I believe is legit. Well, the, as far as the Bigfoot footage, Patterson, that's still being debated by the experts going back and forth. Yeah, and, yeah. and we have the skeptics, but we still have some... Uh, some serious cryptozoologists who believe it's legitimate. I'm still, I'm, I'm probably 51% skeptical, 49% believer on that. It's close. Um, but again, with Bigfoot, that could just be a creature that evolved on Earth naturally, or it could it be an alien being. We've had some reports of from apparently very conservative eyewitnesses claiming they've seen, in a couple of cases, a Bigfoot creature either actually piloting a UFO or emerging from a UFO and a case in uh, Fayetteville, Pennsylvania where two Bigfoot creatures were seen beneath a hovering UFO and some hunters shot at them. One of the Bigfoot creatures lifted its arm to signal the UFO which then departed and they vanished. The two creatures vanished into the forest apparently never to be seen again. So they could be the intelligent beings that were the pilots of UFOs or perhaps secondary creatures again drop down on Earth as guinea pigs to test our environment, or even the third possibility, and this of course could be with the chupacabra too, that they're being exiled to our planet. These could be uh, criminals or wild creatures that alien beings are dumping on our planet just to get them off of their own. So I'd like to consider all possibilities with regard to Bigfoot and also the chupacabra. Exactly. And, um, you know, um, Chewbacca, Chewbacca on Star Wars? Star Wars? He's yeah. sort of like a Bigfoot creature. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, and he drives uh, a spacecraft. So um, evidently they, they know something, you know, because like, like you and I have talked about before, that just because it's a sci-fi movie does not mean that there, you know, there's not any truth in there. Absolutely. Today's so exactly. So, you know, Bigfoot and Chupacabra, they, uh, they may be from the same planet or... Uh, you know, they because there there's a lot of similarities there with with both the creatures. You know. Well, that's possible, but of course, considering the vastness of our island universe, again I point out a hundred mind-boggling number, a hundred billion galaxies, each having perhaps 400 billion stars, ten planets per star. That's four trillion planets per galaxy. The numbers are absolutely mind-boggling. So, it's large enough out there. There are enough. There's enough, there are enough planets that one, the chupacabra could come from one planet and Bigfoot from another, and we could have them on multiple planets. Um, as far um, as, um, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was going to say the the, the chupacabra reminds me a little bit of the Mothman, you know, with the eyes and everything. Right. And uh, there's but, yeah, what were you going to say, Doctor? I was going to say that there are some other creatures. For example, there's one that's called the Mosquito Man in South America. And uh, that's something similar that it has fangs and draws blood out of creatures, and that was reported before the chupacabra, at least, uh, I think, in the mid-70s and 80s. And I should point out, some people reported from the chupacabra that have claimed to have seen it, uh, they've smelled a sulfuric odor. And that, of course, argues for the possibility it's from a planet such as Venus, which is uh, laden with sulfur, or some other alien world beyond our solar system.